Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Happy Sunday and welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of uh weekend update show. Hope everybody's doing well. Hope everybody is having uh, an amazing weekend. Fall is off to a great start. Uh, 70 degree weather, just absolutely gorgeous. So hopefully uh, everybody's happy, healthy. Health is the most important part and everything else is a uh, cherry on top. If you are uh, brand new to the channel, guys, thank you very much for finding us, tuning in, spending uh, 15 minutes of your Sunday uh, with us, and I will try my darnest to uh, help you guys out with unbiased uh, technical analysis. So let's talk about the tape. Uh, if you look at uh, the final numbers this week, nothing really is going to uh, stand out. Matter of fact, it looked like a pretty uh, dead week. Um, here we go. We got for the week, the S&P added uh, two tenths of a percent, the NASDAQ and the Dow edged up literally 0.1%. So it looked like the market was completely dead. There was nothing going on. Well, that's the difference between being an investor, uh, a passive investor, just kind of monitoring uh, your positions or being an active trader. If you were an active trader this week, you know how violent it was. You know how good uh, the market was. You know how great uh, the action, especially in uh, the mega cap technology space was this week. And when I looked at the numbers, I go, wait a minute, the NASDAQ is only flat. And then you realize that at the beginning of the week, we saw some uh, aggressive headlines. Obviously, uh, the Iran-Israel uh, conflict uh, market didn't like that news, didn't like it a couple of times, some very, very aggressive polls. But to the bull's credit, right, to the bull's credit, they did hold meaningful levels. And if you've been following the broadca broadcast along, you knew the importance. We were ready for that five-day uh, five potential break. And that's exactly what the bears got. We were waiting for that potential 10-day uh, break. That's exactly what the Bears got. The last line of defense was the 20-day moving average before we started kind of wiggle our way back to the 50, where this whole massive rally started. So it was really, really good. The fact that we had back-to-back -back days or three days in a row holding the 20-day moving average, not giving in. We could have easily rolled over. In the process, when you have macro geopolitical bad news or very volatile news, the fact that the market didn't respond two, three days later, that means slowly but surely, like everything else, the market's starting to get toned down to these headlines. We know war is horrible. War is good for the economy, but war is horrible. Who the hell wants anybody to die? If you're a little sick lunatic human being and you have puts and you're hoping for uh, a destruction of somebody's life, you have more problems. You shouldn't be watching this broadcast. You shouldn't be anywhere near me, okay? It, it's a, a twisted way to kind of live your life. And I've seen people talk about, well, I hope there's an attack. What kind of person are you? Let's leave those to the side. Positive energy always going forward. But the point is the market did go tone deaf uh, to the headlines as we see, as we continue to see more fluid interaction with more headline strikes and counter strikes uh, and negotiations and the, t the, the talk of nuclear weapons and stuff like that, which again, nobody wants to hear. But the fact is the market did uh, start to go tone deaf, start to embrace in these headlines. And Friday, when you woke up, you had more economic data. Uh, there was a big jobs number. Uh, the bulls embraced this big job number. And you had this pretty uh, significant rally back uh, into uh, the end of the week. You had the Dow up uh, 341 points, uh, S&P up 50, and the NASDAQ up 1.2% uh, or 219 points. But in the process, and again, this is why it's very, very important to understand your levels. And that was kind of the whole key throughout the week. Uh, you, uh, you needed to understand your levels. Whether you're trading the ETF side or you're trading individual equities, you had to understand your, your important levels. And you can see here, this is how we start the week going into Monday. You can see here that not, not only do, there was a triple bottom here in the 20 day, which is great for the bulls to defend it, but we got back above the five 10 day moving average. Why is that important? Because the five day moving average is the shortest term sentiment. And the 10-day moving average, if you ever watch this broadcast or watch the PS60 workshop or in the webinar, you understand that is the birth of the trade. So the fact that the, the QQQs got back above the 5 and the 10-day, and now all we need to do, you see this whole channel here going back to last week? You see this uh, 488.40 level, which is the high from September the 30th, right? 
if we can get back above this uh, 488.40 level, okay, especially on the close, but again, who knows, maybe on a gap, uh, 488.40, we're going to start filling in this whole channel here and hopefully going back to the September highs of 490. Uh, in a half. So very, very important uh, for the bulls. Uh, again, this is all matter of fact taking place still above the 50 day moving average, just like we talk about all the time. Just because we're above a level or below a level doesn't mean it has to go straight up at that level. The overall price action is going to be good. Again, here is the, the proof of the pudding 911. We reclaimed back the 50 day moving average, had a massive rally from 470 to 493. We came back in, we held, and this is, again, still all handling them in a micro bubble that's above the 50-day moving average. So kudos to the Bulls. Uh, they did uh, very, very well. Incredible aggressive week this week. Let's start off. Let's talk about uh, some charts. Um, this week was it was really good week. I mean, really, really good week here. You had the start of the week. Uh, you had this big rally in Tesla, and we'll get to the we'll get to uh, what I think it needs to happen for Tesla to kind of wake up. We had this big big rally last week of Tesla. We lost the five day moving average. If you guys remember, uh, they came out with uh, delivery numbers that missed estimates. Had a big violent three day move down. Really, really violent three day move down. I believe they got upgraded yes on Friday. I could be wrong, but I, I believe that was the case. They got upgraded. Uh, they traded back very, very aggressively into the five-day moving average. They got rejected into the five-day moving average. Uh, what we need to see happen is, number one, you have uh, the October in three days, in four days, right? In four days, you have the October 10th robo-tax event. If the bulls want to rally into that event, and again, I, I don't want to have the whole conversation, sell the event, buy the event. Without talking about the event, I want to see what happens prior to the event. We're, we're, we're talking about tomorrow. Um, so what I'd like to see happen tomorrow is, if you can see here, back to back, two out of the last three days, it's been rejected both at the 10-day moving average and the five. If the bulls tomorrow or Tuesday, whatever the case may be, ahead of the event, can get back above the 10-day moving average, man, we can start really rallying uh, back to recent highs. And obviously, the, the you know the main thing is going to be the robo-tax event. As you can see, a lot of these events, whether it's an iPhone event, whether it's uh, you know a Black Friday event from Amazon, Tesla, yes, a lot of these events have been kind of sell the news scenarios. But does it have to be? Of course not. But again, we're only worrying about the levels leading up to the event. So what I want to see happen tomorrow... Uh, or Tuesday is uh, a reclaiming back above the five and the 10 day cross. And let's see if we can get a run uh, prior uh, to the event. Meta continues to be an absolute rock star. Absolute rock star. If you guys remember, uh, it broke out above the 544 level. This is just massive. It, it again, to, to, to Meta's credit, right? To Meta's credit, it never sold off this week. It never did. It was one of the very few names that held very, very strong. Uh, we saw a bunch of short-term 600 calls uh, being traded. Massive, massive move on Friday. It looks like uh, a 600, 600, 605 test uh, realistic coming in for uh, this week. Microsoft continues to have problems, okay? And this is one of the ones that we continue to talk about that's building a base below the 50-day moving average. That's not good, especially when the market is rallying. I mean, when the hell are you going to rally when the market goes down? So the fact that Microsoft is still building a base below the 50-day moving average, if there is any type of selling this week, this is the one you want to keep an eye on. Again, we've been covering uh, Microsoft through so many levels in the last several weeks. We lost uh, the five-day moving average at 430. We lost the 20-day uh, the, the moving average at 426. We lost the 418.80. These are all levels in the webinar we've been discussing over and over and over again. Lost the 50-day moving average um, on the 50-day moving average. And we're very, very close. If we lose last week's lows, we can start filling in this whole gap here, 409, 410. So Microsoft has a lot of work uh, to do. Apple, you know, all over the place. Um, and what I mean all over the place, all over the place with headlines. First, you have good sales iPhone sales, and you have weak reported sales coming out of China, then you have strong sales coming out of China. The most important thing is we want it to do the technical overview, not where we think it's going to happen a, a year from now. And as you can see here, we're starting to kind of play out like we started to play out on September the 24th and the 25th. You see this right here? You see this candle here on September the 25th, right? You see how it got rejected off this orange line 
And the next day, it got above the orange line. That's the five-day. And then it started a three-day run, where we're kind of looking, kind of a mirror image of that going into Monday. So as you can see here, it got rejected on Friday on the five, 10-day moving average. If we can reclaim the five and the 10-day on Apple, maybe Apple wakes up. So that looks really, really good. AMD had an incredible run this week, really, really strong run. Uh, but the breakout didn't start this week. If you guys remember, uh, if you went to last week's video, it finally got above this 162 level. That was the key level. You know, it, it, this is all uh, this is all one big continuation. But uh, 162 was the major level on the August 20 highs. It got above that. Now this is the highest close in this whole formation, uh, going back to the gap down on July the 17th. The key now is if it starts building a base this week, is it possible it starts filling in this uh, gap to this 173, 175 level? It'll be very, very uh, important uh, to see. NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA, uh, phenomenal. If NVIDIA was phenomenal. Um, you know, phenomenal. We came in, uh, we we caught the bottom channel two days ago. Uh, we wrote it, came in long. Uh, we sold literally, we're pretty much we're closed pre-market though. Uh, it took the whole day to get, to back, get back to the pre-market highs. But an incredible run. If you guys remember, uh, the CEO went on CNBC, said that the Blackwood ships are right on schedule with production. That sparked the rally. We're seeing heavy, heavy call buying coming into the name. The 130 has been printing. Uh, we've seen the February 150s that are printing. Again, I know it sounds far away. It's really not that far. So I want to watch uh, NVIDIA this week. Again, the most important part is let's see if it start, starts testing the September highs in this 127 levels. But again, looks uh, really, uh, really good. Uh, Netflix is another name. It just has not gone down, right? It has not gone down. Uh, let's see if the market continues to have strength. Let's see if this thing uh, starts getting above the recent 725 uh, highs. Google continues to underperform just when it looked like it was about to spark a pretty good rally on uh, last week. It kind of that died down. The only good thing about what's happening is it's still all this action is still happening above the 50 day moving average. That's that glass half uh, full. The key now for this week, we want to see Google take out the October 1st range. If it can start taking out the October 1st range, then we could start seeing higher levels. It's a very, very important part. It, it, it's one of the very few uh, beta names that really hasn't had a, a, an extraordinary run. So this is definitely one of the names I continue to watch is because, again, you can go heavier on a stock coming out of a range off the bottom versus, you know, versus lighter on a continued range of stocks breaking out 10, 15, uh, 20 percent. So let me give you guys some other names uh, I am watching for uh, this week. Um, look at snow. It's not there yet. It's not there yet. But this is kind of my point about watching stocks. On the bottom of the channel, you see how three times in a row uh, snow has gotten rejected off the 34-day uh, EMA, right? Once, twice, Friday got rejected again. If it could get back above the, if it could get back above this 34 EMA, which you got, it got rejected three times. This thing could start rallying into the 50-day moving average. Obviously, a close above the 50-day moving average uh, would be super, super important. So that's very, very, uh, it's a very, very big key for the success of uh, Snow. We talked about Apple, the five and 10 day reclaim. We talked about Tesla, the five and 10 day uh, reclaim. Very, very important. Again, those names, we, it needs option flow to get through supply. That's the key, guys. The one common denominator, if you've been watching the market and we're active participant for the last X amount of years, the option market continues, continues to fuel the underlying equity. The more short-term ex expiration names you have, with more, you know, with more uh, heavy betting on the institutional side, the higher probability uh, the stock is going to wake up. Uh, here was Friday's uh, pivots. Uh, here was Friday's pivots. Um, Thursday again. Uh, Thursday. Uh, this was the, the big pivot pre-market highs, twenty-one fifty. We were long overnight. I'm um, basically I sold pre-market uh, all out. I still think there's a shot against the twenty-seven, which it didn't. Uh, but this was an amazing move. We'll try to re-enter. Uh, on dips, but a great move on on uh, Nvidia. I'm still watching Nvidia this week through last uh, week's channels. Uh, Amazon, beautiful spike. Uh, Amazon 86.60 rejected pre-market highs and the October two highs. Big level needs to confirm. 
here was Amazon. Big spike here. Big spike here at the open. Took out this whole range here. Uh, traded up into the 187.60s. If you look at the daily chart, Amazon's kind of in the same boat as kind of like Tesla and Apple. It's above the five day, but it still needs to get above the 10 day to start really, uh, you know, uh, expanding its wings. Uh, huge move, huge move on AMD. It broke out, well, continuation move on Thursday, 63.10. Like I said, huge move yesterday. It needs to confirm 166.80 and 167.18 for the pre market highs. AMD went absolutely nuts, uh, closed pretty much the highs of the day in the 171 area. Huge move there. Uh, Avago, you know, Avago had a nice spike on Thursday, went up about a dollar and just kind of sat there. But Meta, you know, look at Meta. Meta is just an absolute rock star. Uh, 583.36 uh, needs to build. You know, Meta went up about $13 uh, into the close. And it looks like uh, a 600 handle is going to be uh, right in its future. So we want to keep an eye on Meta. And I believe that is it, right? Oh, no, that's not it. I'm sorry. That's not it. Uh, that's not it. Carvana, 180, never got there. Uh, yeah, Tesla got got above the 49, uh, 80 level, traded to the 51 level. That's where it got rejected. That's the whole point. That's where the 510 is. If it could get above that, it could start waking back up. That's the very key level. And Microsoft, we're still waiting, never got uh, to that level as well. So again, guys, great action. Uh, sometimes the scoreboard doesn't warrant the the action in uh, in the market. Uh, I don't know what everybody else trades. I, I trade technology, mega cap. So the most important part is price action and not the scoreboard. Guys, have a great, amazing Sunday. Hope everybody's doing well. Go outside, go get some exercise. Health is everything. Guys, God bless. I will see you all in the field tomorrow.